Not far off Turkey's coast, there's a race going on. The search for oil and gas on a ship that barely moves for weeks on end. It can drill to depths of up to 12,000 metres as Turkey tries to find its share of the natural resources and the financial benefits that could be available in the eastern Mediterranean. Politicians hope it will help satisfy Turkey's energy needs, leaving it less reliant on outside sources. It was a short trip out to the drill ship party, a vessel worth more than $200 million that was built in South Korea and bought two years ago from a Norwegian firm. It was located about 60 kilometers from the Turkish resort of Al Anya and about 100 kilometers from Antalya, a short trip of half an hour or so by helicopter. We went to the Al Anya 1 borehole, an area that's effectively inside Turkey's exclusive economic zone and where Turkish petroleum is hopeful of making a find. These basins in Turkish eastern Mediterranean may have similar peripheries like the Mediterranean basin, basins, where the recent hydrocarbon reserves have been made in south uh, of Cyprus and in the north of Egypt and in the uh, offshore area of Israel. So this Antalya basin area has many good structures. If workers on this ship can discover something, and if it's commercially viable, then it could help Turkey solve one of its biggest challenges how to become less reliant on other countries for its energy. Turkey is a country that is low on hydrocarbons, importing about 75% of its energy needs, including nearly all of its gas and oil. In 2016, more than half of its gas was supplied by Russia, and the remainder mostly by two other countries, 16.6% from Iran and 14% from Azerbaijan. And as for oil... In the first six months of 2017, Iran supplied 50.9% of Turkey's, while Iraq supplied 29.7%, leaving Turkey facing challenges if there are problems with its suppliers. That's why when the drill ship Fatih was officially launched in October 2018, the Turkish energy minister had this to say. Turkey, energy de bağımsızlığı kendisine... I would like it to be known that being fully energy independent has been set as a primary objective by Turkey. No one can deter us from this. We absolutely believe that our work on this will have positive results. Turkey is also trying to invest in renewable energy and by 2023 wants 30% of its needs to come from that source, but it still has some way to go. Wind power creates about 7% of its energy needs, while other sources such as geothermal and solar power, are barely reaching 1%. But if it can find something in the Mediterranean seabed, then that could become a major part of its energy policy, and it's just a short walk along deck to find out what Turkish Petroleum is doing about that. Right now what's going on here is that they, they are making a connection. What we mean by that is, you know, all these drill pipes, yeah. the, thin, the thin structure, uh -huh. those drill pipes, need to be connected to each other by threads yeah. and that's how you actually reach to the bottom how you make how yeah. you go deeper basically. Yeah. yeah so to go deeper yeah you have the bits and the required equipment above the bit so that you can drill and uh, record at the same time so we have some smart tools that can actually predict what's going on down there the Fati drill ship uses advanced technology to drill into the sea floor First, a conductor pipe is sent down to establish a foundation. Then, a large drill bit connected to a drill pipe is also sent to the seabed. It starts drilling through the rock below, and the drill bit is then pulled back to the ship. Then, casing pipes are sent into the drilled hole to keep it from collapsing. Cement is pumped to the seabed to fill the space left between the hole and casing pipes to make it more secure. Once that's finished, the drill pipe is released and pulled back into the vessel. Fati is equipped with a riser system to drill even deeper and allow the transfer of material from the seabed. The riser pipes are connected and sent down one after another. A blowout preventer is then connected to a wellhead located on top of a casing pipe to stop the uncontrolled release of gas or oil. 
Operations continue with a smaller drill bit. And how do they know they've hit something? They analyse the debris that comes up from the drill. There are some uh, indirect indications, but the di also some direct indications that you have hit something. But until the cuttings are at the surface, you don't know what it is. It might be water, gas, oil, you know, you name it. Uh, and when we say gas, not just hydrocarbon, it might be H2S, which, 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 which is why we have these. This is the danger. Yeah. Yeah. So, so basically, that's what it is. And, uh, it's just a short distance downstairs to a room below deck to have a look at these cuttings. The waste pulled up from the seabed is normally treated before being sent to be used as landfill, but it may also one day convince scientists and engineers here that there are more resources to be found in the Mediterranean seabed. The drill ship Fati is near one of the most competitive parts of the Mediterranean, where a large number of countries are competing to try to find gas and oil but it's right next to the ship where the biggest danger lies. And it's another short walk to find out more about that. This is what's known as the doghouse, a small hut that's effectively the main control centre for the drilling operation, something that has to keep operating even if there's an evacuation after the discovery of dangerous gases such as hydrogen sulphide. So the people in here should be able to work while the non-essential people, as our OIM said, are being evacuated during a... Mm. Yeah. So in order for them to be safe in here, we have to make sure that nothing goes in inside. here. Yeah, yeah if, if there's hazard gas outside, because this, this intake for this house is uh, somewhere not close, so mm. that what it does is it, it, it sucks the air and pumps it in here, mm. so, and, and make sure that the pressure is higher inside. So yeah. when you, if, if you ever need to open the door, Mm -hmm. that the gas outside does not go in. Underneath the deck, an optical illusion is created, a drilling apparatus that looks like it's moving, but it isn't. It's actually the ship that is moving up and down. Waves can reach six metres before the drill has to stop work. It's fixed to the spot where it's trying to find hydrocarbons, at a depth of up to five and a half kilometres. But its progress can be slow, as little as a metre an hour, if the rock is hard. The drilling penetration rate is changed by uh, rock stability. If some rock is so hard, then the drill rate is going to be uh, low. If the uh, rock is so uh, soft, then it's going to be really fast drilling. Fati's location off Turkey isn't controversial, but other possible activities in the Mediterranean might not be viewed with such indifference. Here off the coast of Cyprus, the search for oil and gas is much more complicated. The issue has become tied up with the search for a political solution between the Turkish and Greek Cypriots, and that dispute also involves Turkey. It's not just the coastline that's been taking a battering recently. Politicians are finding these hydrocarbons and making it more difficult to reunify the island. It's been divided since 1974, when Turkish troops arrived to protect Turkish Cypriots, threatened by a coup carried out by Greek Cypriots, who were trying to unify the island with mainland Greece. And in the absence of an agreement, politicians are saying things like this to protect their interests and those of their allies. Doğu Akdeniz'deki doğal kaynakların ülkemiz ve Kuzey Kıbrıs Türk Cumhuriyeti dışlanarak adeta gasp edilmesine yönelik girişimleri kesinlikle kabul etmeyeceğiz. The area that Fatih has been in isn't controversial. It's widely regarded as part of Turkey's exclusive economic zone. There's also one around the island of Cyprus, but that's made more complicated by the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, a state only recognized by Turkey. It claims part of the same zone around Cyprus. And on top of that, there's also a dispute between Turkey and the Greek Cypriots over part of the same area. The Turkish Cypriots have proposed working with the Greek Cypriots over these resources, but the Greek Cypriots say they will put aside proceeds to be shared later, which has provoked this response. What we say is that uh, if you are not going to accept our proposal, we, are, we as the Turkish Cypriots, we are not going to 
uh, try to prevent you what you are doing now in those undisputed areas, uh, mainly in the southern part of uh, the island of Cyprus, in those undisputed areas, undisputed between Turkey and the island of Cyprus, uh, and it is in the, uh, undisputed in the, in the sense that it belongs to both communities, in those areas, we will do the same. Just like you issued license uh, to the companies, we issued license to a company. This is what he's talking about. All these numbered areas from 1 to 13 represent parts of the Mediterranean, where the Greek Cypriots are already looking, or plan to look, for hydrocarbons. They've already awarded some tenders for exploration. But some of these overlap with the Turkish Cypriot areas, marked by the letters A to G. Authorities there are already working with Turkish petroleum. Meanwhile, Greek Cyprus is working with Greece and Israel on a pipeline to bring gas to Europe from the Eastern Mediterranean. And at the start of this year, the Eastern Mediterranean Gas Forum was set up. It excludes Turkey and the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, but includes seven other countries from the region. But many experts believe the natural resources can best be exploited only if these states put their differences behind them. The only way that the, um, the natural resources in Eastern Mediterranean could be in the future uh, commercially viable, it requires all the actors in the region to cooperate, to pull their resources together and try to commercialize those uh, together. That's the only viable way. But for that, there are some preconditions. Precondition number one is solving the Cyprus problem, getting rid of this problem first. And the second one is, of course, the countries in the region should normalize their relations. For example, Turkey normaliz normalizing its relations with Israel and Egypt. Um, Israel normalizing its relations with, uh, for example, uh, Jordan and Lebanon. I know that this is a tall order, but if that could be done, then all the resources together in the East Met can be an alternative source of energy for Turkey. But in the meantime, as diplomacy struggles to make an impact, Turkey is trying to find resources for itself and fuel what is one of the top 20 economies in the world. They're ready to build a production platform and pipeline to transport oil or gas to the mainland in what could mean a change on the horizon for Turkey. Andrew Hopkins for Straight Talk.